Hey, it's Mr. Bass, and I've been telling several of my regular viewers that this video is coming. So I'm glad I finally am getting around to making this video. And what this video is about is the top lures that I used in 2021 to help me catch 803 fish. I had a goal to catch 1,000. I came close, but I fell short. I only caught 803 fish this year. I still feel like that was a good accomplishment. It's the most I think I've caught in a year, although it's the only year that I've ever really kept track of every single fish for an entire year. But I caught fish on a ton of different techniques, but I had a handful of lures. And when I say handful, this is going to fall somewhere between five and 10 lures that I used a lot of and caught a lot of fish on. So this is gonna be a long video, so hopefully you've got patience to stick through the whole video. Um, I'm, And the reason it's gonna be a long video is I'm not just gonna show you the technique. I'm gonna show you the technique, I'm gonna to explain to you the specific baits in that technique I used, and it could lead me down some rabbit holes, who knows? So that's why I'm saying, Brace yourself, this could be a long video. If you're a tackle junkie, tackle nerd, you might love it. If you are got a short attention span, you might not. So, sorry about that. Anyway, the number one bait in 2021 that caught me more fish by far than any other technique was the bladed jig, the vibrating jig, or the chatterbait as we know it. Without question. And there's several reasons why. One, I love throwing a chatterbait. Two, it's an easy bait to catch quantity of fish. When you're trying to really hit numbers and quantity, and I like I got an 803 fish goal, many, many times it would be the first thing I would throw. And then if it starts catching fish, I just keep throwing it, right? <clears throat> because I'm shooting for that thousand fish. So that is why I always had it tied on. I usually threw it first, and if it was working, I usually didn't stop. So of my 803 fish, I didn't keep specific numbers on this, but I know for a fact that it caught more fish than, than any other bait by far. So what was my number one chatterbait, my number one bladed jig? It has got to be the Strike King Thunder Cricket, that was my number one bait right there. Uh, I caught more fish on the Thunder Cricket than any other bait. Uh, the Thunder Cricket has this kind of bent, rounded, rounded, vibrating blade, which makes it a little different. The blade is very thin. It has great color patterns, and uh, it flat out catches fish. It's a great... It's a great chatterbait, a great bladed jig. The next chatterbait that probably number two, as far as quantities of fish, was the jackhammer. This is uh, kind of the premier top of the line bladed jig in the Z-Man lineup. And of course, Z-Man invented the chatterbait. They were the first ones to come out with a the chatterbait. They've got a ton of different models. The jackhammer is their most expensive, and I think it's their best. And this just gives you an idea of what the jackhammer looks like. This is heavier than I throw. Most of the time, I'm throwing half ounce or three eighths ounce. This is a three quarter ounce if you really need to get deep. But most of the time, I only need those two weights three eighths and half ounce. All right. Then I have a couple of other bladed jigs that I threw quite a bit this year. And uh, they kind of start to blend together as in numbers. One is, this used to be my all-time favorite bladed jig. It's called the Rumblefish. And they don't even make this bladed jig anymore. But it's a great bait. The blade is thicker than the, than the um, Strike King bait or the Z-Man baits. Uh, it's very stout and stiff. It does have these two holes in it that, uh, you know, maybe water moves through there and maybe you get some bubble action. I don't know. All I know is the Rumblefish is an excellent 
bladed jig and I wish you could still get them, but you cannot. Um, then I have uh, a couple of other ones that I threw. <laughs> I didn't catch a ton of fish on this one, I got to admit, but I did throw it some. And what this is, is just a chatterbait with a big head and hook on it and no skirt. And you can see it's pretty dirty. It was in my kayak and got a lot of road dust and stuff on it. Uh, but I did catch some on this. This is a Z-Man bait. Um, I also caught, uh, I had three new chatter baits that I've never thrown before that I threw this year for the first time. One was the um, clickbait, the Guggen Squad clickbait chatterbait. Now, some guys say, well, that's not even a chatterbait because it's got this funky wire thing on here. Uh, I disagree. I believe it is a vibrating jig. It's a, it's a chatterbait copy. And it's interesting because you can adjust the height of, of how this bait travels in the water, whether it travels really shallow or deeper diving by bending this wire, you can bend this wire and move it back and forth. And uh, it, it gives you the ability to adjust the depth of your chatterbait without changing the line size, which is interesting. Uh, I got to admit, when I first started throwing this, I didn't like it. It ran really shallow. It almost ran on top of the water, but that's because I didn't realize you could adjust the wire here. And once I figured that out, that kind of solved that problem. Where this thing really shined for me is over wood and timber. Uh, it really does well in timber. And a lot of chatterbaits do not do well in timber. They hang up a lot. But the clickbait, um, I'm going to keep in my box because it does so well in the timber. Now, there's a couple of other baits that <clears throat> I had brand new this year that are also designed around heavy cover. One of them is the cross eyes chatterbait, which is basically just a snag resistant bladed jig. This I am really liking a lot. I've thrown it quite a bit. It definitely catches fish. It's a very good bait. And it's pretty much just a standard chatterbait. It does have the shape of the head is more of an archy style head. I don't really think that matters to tell you the truth. But what sets it apart is the weed guard on this thing. It's two stiff wires that you could adjust. You could spread them out. You can bring them in. You can bring them up or down. And they do a pretty good job of keeping this bait from getting snagged in the timber as well. So I really like that. And then the last one that I started throwing this, this year, and I really like, and I'm going to keep throwing this quite a bit, is the Picasso Lures Heavy Cover uh, Bladed Jig. And it's kind of the same process, you know, a typical bladed jig, but it has three wires. And the, the wires are thinner than the wires on the cross eyes, but they do quite well. In fact, I feel like they do better in uh, protecting you from snags than the cross eyes. But that's just kind of my personal opinion. <laughs> okay, as far as trailers go... My number one trailer has been for several years and still is the Yamamoto Zacco. That's this bad boy right here. Here's another one. You can see I showed you several of these that have a Zacco on them. Normally, that's what I'm throwing. I'm throwing a Zacco first. Now, they do make a Zacco with a paddle tail. I haven't thrown that yet because I really like... I really like... I usually don't go to paddle tails for my for my chatter baits. Um, every once in a while I will, but I generally speaking prefer something more like the Zacco, the original Zacco. Um, my buddy Steve at Get Your Fish On gave me this trailer and it has done very well for me. I don't remember the name of this company though. Um, so unfortunately I can't tell you the name of it, but it's a very good bladed jig trailer. It worked quite well. Um, you probably saw this one here. This is a just a huge curly tail grub that actually worked very well for me on bladed jig. I 
here I have one of them tied on on my Thunder Cricket, one of my Thunder Crickets, and it works very, very well. This is a Smart Baits lure. I think I got it. I, no, Chase Baits. This is a Chase Baits lure, and definitely this four-inch curly tail grub, they call it the four-inch curly bait, really makes a very nice trailer for your chatter bait. Another new bait that I started throwing this year is the 10,000 fish Yoda worm. This makes a great chatterbait trailer. <clears throat> Another one that I like quite a bit is, that's right, the Rage Tail uh, Grub Menace from uh, Strike King. It's a makes a very makes a very good chatterbait trailer. Definitely like that. I also will put these on swim jigs. I like them as swim jig trailers as well. Um, I also, when I go with a paddle tail, a lot of times I'll use this Exo Swim from Biospawn. I like it quite a bit. I like the action and how much it displaces water. I'll also put on there some craws. Usually I'll put a speed craw on there or a chigger craw. And uh, here's the speed craw. I'll take one of those out so you can kind of see what it looks like out of the package. Speed Craw is compact. It fits very well on your bladed jig hook and uh, has some nice action in the water. The Chigger Craw is probably, I, I actually like it better than I do the Speed Craw. If I'm putting a craw on, usually I'll throw the Chigger Craw first and I usually go with the three inch model. These things bend really easily. If I let go, you'll see in the package they bend up, but it doesn't seem to matter when you get them on the bait. Pull these two apart. Big flappers, especially if I'm in some really dirty water. I'll take a black and blue, put it on a black and blue uh, thunder cricket chatter bait of some sort, and uh, does really well in the dirty water. Get a lot of action on it. So that is my number one bait for 2021, the vibrating jig. And as I said before, the Thunder Cricket just so happens to be the one that I caught the absolute most fish on. So I just showed you the number one fish catcher. The rest of these baits that I'm going to show you are not in any specific order. Um, although I will try to concentrate the first five or so on ones that caught me more fish. I don't really want to get into, well, this one caught 100 and this one caught 75 and that kind of thing. I didn't keep track of those numbers anyway, but I do have a very good feel for what I caught with what and how much. So I thought next I'd hit on top water. Um, I did throw a lot of top water baits this year. I threw, you know, uh, poppers. I threw hollow body frogs. I threw spooks, any kind of walk the dog style baits. I threw some wake baits. I threw some uh, propeller style topwater lures, um, but the number one topwater bait that caught the vast majority, and when I say the vast majority, I bet 90% of my topwater fish this year came on one bait, and that is the buzz bait. Yeah, the buzz bait was my number one topwater bait. Hands down, way more than any other topwater lure. Um, why is that? I don't know, really, to tell you the truth. I just seem to have more luck catching fish on the buzz bait this year. And, uh, you know, usually the way this works is you might have a buzz bait tied on. You might have a spook tied on. You might have some other topwater bait tied on. You start throwing the spook. You don't get any bites on it. You pick up the buzz bait, you get a few bites. Before you know it, you're throwing the buzz bait the rest of the time. Um, what I did normally do, especially first thing very early in the morning, I'd break out the buzz bait. And if it was whacking them, I would just stick with it until, until it stopped. This was a new buzz bait for me, though. Uh, this came, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago, maybe a year and a half. It came in my Monster Bass box. It's the Booyah Squelcher. Three eighths and half ounce. Uh, most of my squelchers are three eighths. 
Look how big the blade is. Let me just give you an idea of how big that blade is compared to. Here's kind of a normal size buzz bait, buzz bait blade. And here's the squelcher next to it. Look, <laughs> it's massive. It makes a ton of racket, displaces a ton of water. And it was new for me uh, because it came in my Monster Bass box. I said, well, I'll give it a try. And the first day I threw it, man, I just slayed them. So I stuck with the squelcher a lot this year. In fact, I pretty much only threw two baits. I would usually start with this big, super noisy one, the squelcher. I had three colors that I was throwing. And this is the color that caught me most of my fish this year. What do they call this color? White chartreuse uh, with the, the silver blade. In fact, I don't know if it comes with a gold blade or any other colored blades. I only threw it with this silver blade. But this was my number one color. This was probably my number two color, kind of solid chartreuse. And they just call that citrus shad. And then the third was a black, a black uh, buzz bait. Has a little bit of red in it. This one they call black. So those were my three main colors. And that's what I was throwing most of the time. Now I would modify it. Uh, most of the time I would just keep the skirt on. But sometimes I go to a frog and put a topwater frog on there like this. In this particular instance, I just trim this skirt kind of way back. Sometimes I'll take the skirt. Most of the time I'll take the skirt completely off like this one and just throw it. Um, without a skirt, but in this case, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit and give it a little more bling bling by leaving some skirt on. You can't, uh, you can't have a lot of skirt cause it'll interfere with the action of the legs. So that's about the most I'll ever do when I put a, put a frog on. All right. So if they weren't hitting this big, big noisy blade, my second option was the Boogerman Racket Buzz. Uh, this does make some racket, um, but it's a what I would call a subtle racket. It's a lot smaller bait, as you can see, compared to, again, compared to the size of the squelcher. Let's see if I can get them. The squelcher is ginormous. The blade's huge. The uh, arm here is much, much longer. Um, and so this is just a much more finessey, subtle buzz bait. I love these Boogerman buzz baits. And this is not really the main color I was throwing. I was throwing a white one most of the time with the Boogerman. In fact, the tournament that I fished up at the uh, Mississippi River, I was throwing a white one and caught most of my fish during the day on that white one. Uh, but regardless, this is a great buzz bait, tried and true. And I just kind of alternated back and forth from those two. So definitely bait number two, I would say, was the buzz bait. Lure number three of my most used Fish catching baits of 2021 is also not very sexy. It's not, it's not uh, something to brag about maybe, but hey, I don't care what the bait is. I don't care how much people love it. I don't care how much people hate it. If it's catching me fish, I want to, I want to use it. And that is the Ned rig. Yeah. The Ned Rig. This is it. Without a doubt, the Ned Rig caught me a ton of fish in 2021. And it's going to catch me a ton of fish in 2022. It works everywhere, literally. Smallmouth waters. Deep south. Far west, Midwest, far north, no matter where you're fishing, the Ned Rig works. And uh, I 
I, I'm all, I was throwing it all the time. I had a Ned rig everywhere I went and I was throwing it. Whenever things got tough, whenever things, the conditions were right, I was throwing that Ned rig. So when it comes to the Ned rig, let me show you the baits that I probably use more than any other bait. Really, it's pretty simple. I tend to stick to the TRD style baits, just a plain old short stick bait. And uh, the Z-Man TRD is probably my number one go-to. This is one of my favorite colors, Copper Truce. I throw it a lot. Probably the color that I threw the absolute most on the uh, Z-Man TRDs was June Bug. For me, uh, June Bug always works great. It works almost everywhere. Uh, the fish love it. This is my number one go-to color uh, when it comes to the Z-Man TRD. And this is my number one style of Z-Man bait, just the plain Jane TRD. I will throw the big TRD some. I like the Ticklers that uh, has the little tentacles on it. Let's see if I got one of those sitting around here. Um, kind of like this little guy. It's got, you know, just a few, few little strands. Mix it up a little bit. They have a little action in the water. That's a nice bait. That's a TRD bait as well. Um, a lot of people are throwing the goat. I did throw the goat some, but I did not catch many fish on it. I find myself going back to the Plain Jane TRD more often than any. Here's the big TRD. I, I threw this a lot as well in multiple colors. Uh, so those are the Z-Man baits. Uh, when you get away from the Z-Man brand, I had a few others that I really like a lot. This is probably my next to favorite. And this is the Strike King Ned Ocho. Love this bait. Love the action of this bait. Love the shape of it. Love how it fishes. It's durable. It's not as durable as the Z-Man TRD, but it's a very durable bait. And uh, I throw this a lot. Another bait that I really, really like are the Robo Worms. Uh, I think they're called the Ned Robo Worm or something like that. These are great baits. Their colors... I think their colors are the absolute best. There's, I, I don't think there's another company out there that makes as many great colors as the Robo Worm colors. Um, here's just a couple. Uh, you know, they're just like the regular uh, Robo Worm colors. They're just fantastic. They're they're really awesome. All right. Um, another one that I found that I like quite a bit was this little TRD shaped bait, and this is the Guggen. Ned bait. And the reason I like it, it's the rattling Ned. It's got rattles in it. <laughs> and uh, sometimes that rattle really paid off. And I, I don't know why more companies aren't doing the rattle thing, but I really, really like that one. And then the last one that uh, I threw a lot this year, caught a lot of fish on, was the Jackal yammy fish these little guys also great action in the water they're pretty tough pretty durable and uh great catch fishing great fish catching lures okay as far as the ned heads go <clears throat> i got a bunch of them that i use uh i will fish a ned rig in cover quite a bit and so when i do that I'm throwing an EWG style Ned uh, jig head like this so that I can Texas rig it and fish it weedless. I throw this head a lot. Here's another little basic jig head that I throw. I really like this one. I like this one quite a bit too. I think this is by uh, Super K Jigs. I think that's their brand there. If not, the Super K's look very similar to that these i like a lot as well um i think these are z-mans and i think they call this the ned locks this little thing works really good on holding a Laztec plastic 
on your jig head. You know, Elastec is really kind of hard to get on, <clears throat> but once you get it on these little Ned lock heads, they work great. So really, really good heads. I, I, I like those a lot. So, so that's kind of the down and dirty on my Ned rigs. Fantastic bait. I'm always going to have one. I'm always going to be throwing it, uh, depending upon how tough the conditions are. As far as equipment goes, I obviously throw it on spinning equipment. And um, I usually fish my Ned rigs with braid, 15 pound braid, and then I'll have a fluorocarbon leader. And I usually go with a fairly long fluorocarbon leader, 10, 12, 15 feet long. And the size just depends on water clarity, that kind of thing. I usually don't go much smaller than eight pound test, and I usually don't get, go any bigger than 12 pound test. Sometimes I might drop down to like a six pound test line, but very, very rarely. Ned rig is awesome. You really need to go check out and try a Ned rig. If you're not throwing a Ned rig, you've got to try it. Number four of the very best baits that caught me the absolute most fish in 2021. This one also is not uh, a real flattery, sexy bait. Um, and when you think about it, if you're going for quantity, if you're trying to hit a thousand fish, you don't really care about the latest, greatest thing. You know, the spy baits and the free rigs and the Enu rigs and whatever you want to throw out there. Uh, you want the tried and true stuff that's going to catch you lots of fish over and over and over. And hey, that's what this is. A seven inch ribbon tail worm. This is the real deal. It will catch you a ton of fish. And it's actually very fun fishing. And it's so versatile. You can fish it a ton of different ways. What I'm going to talk about is probably the most common way to fish it, and it's the way that I fished it 99% of the time this year, and that's a simple Texas rig. Uh, now, this color is also one of my go-to colors. Um, any kind of a red worm is really what I'm throwing almost all the time. It doesn't mean I won't throw some darker worms, uh, but especially it seems like when I'm throwing a ribbon tail worm. I always gravitate towards the reds, and I'm going to show you a few here uh, that I've got. This one by Biospawn is called Candy Red Blue Flake. I think the color is perfect. This is a color I would throw often, and uh, I, I really like these Exo ribbon worms. They're great, good price. They're very durable, um, and uh, they're perfect. Here's another one that I throw all the time as well. The Berkeley Power Bait Power Worm. Seven inch is the is the my go-to. I will throw a 10 inch as well, but normally I don't start throwing the 10 inch until we get in the super hot part of the summer. And this is another critical color I throw all the time. Tequila Sunrise. I have a tequila sunrise in my box always. Absolutely always. I like the power bait um, because of the scent uh, compared to, say, the XO ribbon. So maybe when things are a little tough or I'm trying to get a few more bites, I go with the power bait scent. I wonder if they're going to make this in max scent. Maybe they already do. If they do, I got to get some of those. <clears throat> Yum also makes a tequila sunrise. And I found it's just as good as the power bait. The only difference is the power bait has a little, it's a little more stinky. But uh, seven inch ribbon tail worm, super versatile. I throw it all the time. How do I throw it? I usually throw it on um, a worm hook, an offset worm hook. Uh, usually a three aught or four aught size worm hook. And I go with a very light tungsten bullet weight. Um, usually about an eighth of an ounce is what I start with. Um, and it's because I usually don't want it dropping super fast. Uh, eighth of an ounce for, for most of the time drops it just, just the right amount of speed and uh, gets great bites. The reason I fish at Texas Rig is I throw it in brush piles all the time. I throw it in laydowns. I throw it around timber. I throw it in the grass. I throw that thing. I get it in the junk. And 
you will catch all kinds of fish on a seven inch ribbon tail worm. Here's another thing. Cream lures, they make an awesome seven inch ribbon tail worm. And it's cheap, 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 cheap. This thing's probably half the price of any of those other worms I showed you. So if you're on a budget, <laughs> you don't have to get fancy. The ribbon tail worms from Cream Lures work great. All right, so that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, let me hit one more technique uh, here uh, that I'll show you. And then probably what I'm going to do is wrap up this video. And then for you tackle nerds, that want to see even more of this, I will do a part two video that'll probably be just as long as this with another five lures to choose from. Okay, this technique I'm about to show you is also a tried and true, dyed in the wool technique. I was throwing it all the time and it was very, very effective for me. And I know it will be very, very effective for you too. And that is... A soft swim bait. And this is my favorite soft swim bait. I tend to throw the Reaction Innovations swim bait more than any other. This is the Skinny Dipper, which is actually a little bigger. The one that I throw mostly is called the Little Dipper. Where's that? I got three packs of Skinny Dippers. Here's some Little Dippers. Little Dipper is the one I'm going to throw most of the time. Uh, this color is great. Sexy Shad. <laughs> this is also a great color. Gunnersville Shad. Especially if you're in a little, little darker water. I really like this one too. Shiner. Look at that one. I'll take one of these out of the package just so you can see it up close. <clears throat> to me, the... Little Dipper is the perfect little swim bait to put on a little quarter ounce uh, ball head jig or eighth ounce ball head jig or any other kind of swim jig head. Um, I usually put it open hook. I usually, I rarely, rarely rig this weedless. You can with a belly weighted hook rig these weedless. I normally don't do that. I put an exposed hook through it. And uh, let me show you some of the jig heads that I use. One of them that I've gravitated toward and started throwing a lot this year, and I like them a whole lot, are by Z-Man. They're called the Redfish Eye. Look at that big honking eye on there. I think that uh, is very nice. It's got a two-sided bait keeper, as you can see on there. And the hooks are oversized. They're really big hooks. Uh, they're very sharp. Here's the smaller size. That one there that I was showing you is a quarter ounce. This is the eighth ounce. And you can see the head's a lot smaller on the eight ounce, eighth ounce. <clears throat> and I throw the eighth ounce more than any other size. Works great for any si any type of, you can put Kitex on this. You can put any brand of uh, swim bait, paddle tail swim bait on there. Works great. Another swim bait that I throw uh, that works quite well is the Divine Swim Bait. Gambler Lures make some nice little swim baits. Of course, here's your Kitex. Can't go wrong with a Kitex or any other brand out there that looks like a Kitex. These kind of are cool. The Realis Booster Wake. And when I'm fishing for smallies, I really like the Spark Shad. It will catch you largemouth too, but for some reason, I just feel like the spark shad works way better for smallmouth. To tell you quite frankly, the specific swim bait that you're using doesn't seem to matter a whole lot, but I do feel like I have more confidence in and catch more fish on the Reaction Innovations Little Dipper. That's what I'm going to start with most of the time. It is a great technique. I'll show you a few more swim bait heads just in case you're wanting to see some varieties. But again, I don't think the swim bait head matters as much either. It's got to run true. It's got to uh, have a nice hook. It's got to be. Uh, it's got to be. Uh, it's got to do its job without getting in the way of the action of the swim bait. That's the most important thing. Um, let me show you a few of these. 
This one I really like by Jewel Baits. It's called the Gem Shad. It has a very nice bait keeper on it. The thing I like about this one more than anything is the fact that it's got a weed guard. So when I'm fishing around cover, which I do fish around cover a lot, I like to have a weed guard like this with an open hook rather than the belly weighted hook I was talking about earlier. Uh, this is, I think this is a six cents one. And here's one from Dirty Jigs. I like the Dirty Jig swim bait heads quite a bit. But, you know, you can basically tell there's a common theme here. You got a nice open hook. You got a decent bait keeper. And you got a swim bait head that you can tie your line to. Uh, having a nice big eye, I think, is a nice touch. But you absolutely don't need them. A lot of people just throw a plain Jane ball head jig. Uh, let me see if I got one of those in here. Yeah, here's one. These, this one here is actually a tungsten head, and this is the one that I use for my dark sleepers. Kitek makes this. Just a plain ball. That's all you need. It will work just fine. But fishing a swim bait just in open water, you don't, you don't, you know, works great. I cannot tell you how many fish I have caught fishing a little dipper. Just, I mean, it works in ponds. It works in lakes. It works in rivers. It works in the Great Lakes. It, it Literally, everywhere you fish a swim bait, a little soft plastic paddle tail swim bait lights out. It's money. I promise you. Go get it. Go try it. You're going to love it. So those are my first five techniques that helped me catch 803 bass this year. By far, I bet I caught way more than 50% of my fish just on those five techniques right there. Maybe 75%. Um, that's all you need, quite frankly. Um, the ones that I'm going to show you in part two are a little more off the wall, maybe. Uh, at least some of them will be. And uh, they helped me catch a lot of fish this year, too. Um, that should be fun. If you like this video, Stay tuned, and I'll put the other one up here in another day or two right behind this one. Please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the videos. I would greatly appreciate that. And hey, that alarm bell, that alarm bell will let you know when I'm going to do my next live stream. I do a lot of live streams, give away a lot of tackle. Hope you'll enjoy me for that. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for supporting the Mr. Bass channel. I greatly appreciate it. Until next time, this is Mr. Bass. Happy fishing!